from uh, what we have been doing, people have just come in at the right time. Okay. <coughs> we are dealing with Hilbert space of random variables, all possible random variables with the inner product, zero mean random variables with an inner product given by the correlation. And in general, the random variables are complex valued. That is, I am dealing with the Hilbert space over the field of complex numbers. Scalars that I will be using, they are in general complex. Okay. They are one particular problem we will be now studying, and that is the problem of linear prediction. This is related to optimal filter and adaptive filter, as it will slowly, you know, I mean, uh, reveal. But to start with, let us see what is a linear, I mean, what is a linear prediction, okay. PA thought of linear prediction. Suppose in the optimal filter scenario, we had this thing, right? There was a sequence coming, we had a filter W, W vector output was w vector h, the input here, okay. if the input you say u n, then it is w and there was a desired response, this is the error, the error was we took the variance of the error, which was a second order function of uh, all the weights, we minimized it it gives a only a, it is a quadratic function of the weights. So, basically it has a unique minima or maxima and in this case it is minima, you solve it, you get a filter expression and since all the processes are stationary, jointly stationary and independently stationary also, the filter that comes out is independent of n optimal filter, it does not depend on the time index n that you have seen. In fact, the filter expression is R inverse P and all that we have seen, okay. R is the auto correlation matrix of the input p is the cross correlation uh, vector between d n and u n vector, all those we know. Now, we also know the actual meaning of this geometric interpretation that actually you are pre orthogonally projecting d n in the space span by u n, u n minus 1 up to some past term p u n minus p, projection is unique, this is, so the projection coefficients are given by this, they combine them and you get the output, that output I call a filter output, but basically nothing but combining, linearly combining u n, u n minus 1 up to u n minus p by some coefficients. So, that the error norm square is minimized and that error indeed will be orthogonal to each of u a and u n minus 1 that we have seen from our vector space point of view. Now, we will consider now a particular case where this u n is coming from one signal x n with a delay and this is coming directly here. And how many suppose we have got uh, w equivalently what w say in this case let us put w 1 to w p not w 0, so p coefficients. So, u n is nothing but x n minus 1. Okay. What is this uh, optical filtering problem here then? You are estimating x n okay, from what x n minus 1 x n minus 2 up to x n minus p. So, orthogonally projecting x n on the space span by x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus p. So, what you get is a linear combination of the past p samples, which is a good estimate of current sample. So, this estimate is called a linear prediction. That is the best possible in terms of vector space arrangement, you know vector space notion, this is the best estimate, because the corresponding error has the minimum norm square and that will be orthogonal to all this, you know, x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus p. So, this is a special case of the general optical filtering problem where d n and input are generated from some x n, but obviously x n is nothing but, I mean this is our linear prediction problem because what you are doing is you are trying to, I mean estimate x n as a past combination of, as a combination of the past samples or rather you are uh, projecting x of n on the space span by x n minus 1, x n minus 2 dot 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 x n minus p, the linear combination comes out here which is the prediction, this is the best prediction because the corresponding error, I mean this corresponds to orthogonal projection, the error is perpendicular this orthogonal to all these terms even I mean x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus p and therefore, the error has minimum norm square, norm square means variance, fine. In this case obviously, this combiner coefficients from stationarity, if you assume x n to be w says y says stationary and all that, we know from our uh, you know from our earlier analysis what the, this expression for w is that we know that was the r inverse p. 
how R and P independent of N, how did that happen? Because of stationarity. So, in this case you know one thing that even though random variables here are x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus 3 that are all function of n, the thing that you are doing to project that is x n that also is a function of n. The combiner coefficients they are independent of n. So, whether at nth index or at mth index or kth index whatever you do you get the same combiner coefficients. That comes from stationarity that you all know there is beyond question now. Okay. That is why the combiner coefficients are independent of n. Okay. Now, keeping this in mind, now let me <coughs> introduce some uh, notations and notions rather. Okay. Suppose in that Hilbert space H, I consider a subspace WKP is a span of Xn minus K x n minus k minus 1 dot 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 x n minus p and obviously, k is less than equal to p. Some definitions I am now giving you. Starting from past sample x n minus k to x n minus p and k is of course, less than equal to p otherwise it has no meaning. If you take their span call it w k p that is a subspace of the Hilbert space h. So, this subspace has its own linear projection operator, a orthogonal projection operator. I told you for this subspace, I mean given this subspace, take any vector of h, there is any random variable, you can have an or unique orthogonal projection of that on this, and that operation is linear. You remember I proved all this, that operation is linear, okay. So, that operator also is unique because it takes if you take uh, any vector, it gives you only one output, one uh, component uniquely. So, that is a unique operator, is not it? Anyway, so that I denote as this P K P as the orthogonal projection operator with respect to the given W K P. But I told you often instead of projection rather in the case of lattice in fact linear projection and all, we will be more bothered about the error. Error is orthogonal to the subspace we know, error will be orthogonal to the subspace, but that error I want to find out. So, given an external random variable say x not x or y whatever p k p comma x p k p working on y or say y is a random variable that will give you the projection, projection will be a best linear combination of these elements but I want to find out the error, the error will be orthogonal to them having the minimum number square that error operator is what? I will denote like this, hmm? which is this actually i minus i is the identity operator, no matrix nothing just operator symbolically, what is uh, this is called orthogonal projection error operator. We have done all this in previous classes. It will give you, if you work this on that external vector say y, this will give you the error. That is y minus the projection, fine. And that will be orthogonal to all these fellows who are spanning the space. I am of course, assuming that none of the samples are linearly related. That is, this subspace has dimension equal to the total number of entry here. The samples of the random process, they are not any linearly related. There is no linear dependence relation. That is under always that is always there Im, uh, this implicit in all matrix bin, no, no linear relation linking some samples of a random process, okay. because in, in real life it hardly happens, this is the thing. Hmm. Then I define two quantities, please un, uh, concentrate on all these, pth order, pth order forward linear prediction error. I will explain, please follow my notation. E p f p th order forward error, error means a linear prediction error at index n. It is nothing but if you consider this error, if you consider this error, Can you tell me in terms of this notation what will that be? Because in this case, what is this error? You are projecting x n orthogonally on the space span by who? 
x n minus 1 to x n minus 3. That means k is 1. So, the space is there is w 1 comma p. So, corresponding projection is p 1 comma p. Projection error is p 1 comma p perpendicular. That working on whom? Who is being projected? x n. Okay. If instead of E p f n, I go for E p plus 1 f n, I will have to have one more term here, x n minus p minus 1, one more term I have to bring in, find out a projection and that is what I will be doing, but I will be then orthogonally decomposing the subspaces, Sus the subspace into 2, all those things I will do. Now, this is forward prediction, why it is called forward prediction, because very obviously from past you are looking at future, future prediction forward, this is a normal thing you know, it makes at least some sense that from past you are trying to or from past up to present you are trying to find out the future. At least you get the coefficient, use that, use them separately to combine x n, x n minus 1 up to some term to predict about x n plus 1, coefficients remain same, that has some sense. But now I will be bringing, doing another kind of prediction which does not appear to have any practical sense, but that is the key to everything, that is called backward prediction. Backward prediction means predicting some past term from current, from the future of the past term including up to the current term. Okay. You can ask me what is the use, the past term is already available to us, exactly, there is no, I mean, no need to, I agree, there is no need to estimate it, but still we will be doing it because of many reasons. One that if you are interested to find out these projections for various values of p, 0, p equal to 1, p equal to 2, you need that as a secondary computation, you note those. Okay, but the more fundamental region, I will come to that, but first let me give you the definition. I am turning over the page, I hope you remember these notations, please remember because I cannot go on showing it, but maybe here only I can show. E p b n backward prediction p th order anything this. What you are doing here, you are taking say this candidate, you should see the notation. When it is E p f n, you should not get confused with the rotation, so please see the rotation, understand one for all. First see whether it is f or b, f means forward, p means order, n, n is the current index, that means take x n as the guide to be projected or predicted, x n and on whom is the projection, x n minus 1 to x n minus p. But if it is E p b n, it is backward then take the past quantity, what quantity n minus p, that you project on is p future ones. What are the p future ones? x n, you have to start at x n, x n, x n minus 1 up to x n minus p plus 1. Okay. That you do not try to understand uh, the, what is the utility of that prediction, that we will see later. At least for this prediction, I need this prediction. Let me put it that way. Later you will see that this prediction actually will do grass meet orthogonalization of the vector space. That later, for which lattice will be used. Okay. EPBN then means, that means I am projecting this guy, say x n minus p onto whom? On the span of current 1, you have to always start at current 1. So, see how to <coughs> use this notation n first is backward prediction that means have to go to a past term which past term n is the current index so n minus p x n minus p should be the term that should be projected into its p future ones what are the p future ones x n okay Okay. So, in terms of our vector space notation, what is the space here? n minus 0, so k equal to 0 and p minus 1 here, w 0 comma p minus 1, is it? Are you see the notation, what is this? n minus k, it was general case, n minus k to n minus p I took, what is k here? k is 0, n minus 0, 
what is p here? Instead of p, I have n minus within bracket p minus 1, isn't it? So, in this notation, it is w 0 comma p minus 1, which means p 0 comma p minus 1, which means p 0 comma p minus 1 here, okay. Do not get confused with this capital P and small p, there are two different things, I hope you understand. This position of pointer, this order, if you want, I can change this small p to anything else, but I hope you can see this. Hmm? Is that okay, no? So, that means, this is equal to what? This is an error, not projection, but the corresponding error. Okay. Now, these errors are also random variables. So, I can have their variances also, which I will need in my development. So, I define the variance of this guy. My claim is that variance is independent of n. Why? Simply, what is this, this quantity? It is the projection error means d n, that is x n minus the projection, x n minus the projection. What is that projection? It is a linear combination of those elements, x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus p. But the linear combiner coefficients we already know because of stationarity they are independent of n, is not it? For any general case, you give a sequence here and you give uh, some sequence something here, you get a linear combiner coefficient or filter, those are independent of n. That we have seen because of stationarity, we are also assuming stationary WSS thing. That means, what is this quantity? It is x n minus a linear combination of first terms x n minus 1 to x n minus 3, but the combiner coefficients are constant independent of n. That quantity I have to find its variance. So, I will take the mod and square or the quantity multiplied by its conjugate and there you now take all the terms, you will get lot of co correlation terms, but because of stationarity all n will go from everywhere. Are you following me? I am not showing that this is very, you should be able to visualize na? I am writing this as x n minus linear combination of first terms x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus p. Linear combiner coefficients are independent of n that we have found out, we have seen in a general case. Now, this error I want to take its mod square or the error and multiply by its conjugate and take expectation operation. That is the correlation, that is the uh, norm square definition na, in terms of Hilbert space. Multiply a uh, random variable with its conjugate, this mod square, take expected value. So, I take expected value. The moment I take expected value, there is norm square, there is variance. Because of stationarity of x n, all those terms, multiplying terms, they become independent of n, is not it? You get some uh, elements, I mean where linear combiner coefficients will be present and correlation terms will be present, but nothing of n. So, that means norm square of this guy, there is variance of this guy also independent of n. So, in the notation, I can drop name, that is what I am saying. Notation I will be using sigma p f, p and f goes as it is, but no n and I put a square because you know always like in a Gaussian case instead of sigma is a sigma square because it's variance after all. Just for that I put 2, this 2 is a notation and this is what you can say E of square which is also equivalent to norm square of this guy using vector space notation. By the same logic, I can uh, denote its, I can take its variance also, its variance also will be independent of n, after all, what is E p b n? You are giving here x n minus p, is not it? Here x n minus p, that is all, but they are jointly stationary, this input is stationary, so obviously, this filter will be independent of n and all that again, is not it? And the same logic works, so I give the notation sigma p b square, which is this E p b n square, that is the expected value of mod square of this. Okay. Can you see up to this in our screen, up to this line? Now? gone. Okay. Now, suppose you know some way or other these two quantities, p th order forward and backward friction error, you know them, you know these quantities also. And I say get me the same quantities, at least 
to start with the error for p plus 1th order recursively. Hmm. Given this four quantities, at least get me these two corresponding errors forward and backward for the next order p plus 1th. And assume p to be p to be at least equal to 1, so that there is like you know here when you say p 1 comma p if this small p is not 1, 1 comma 0 is meaningless here. You start at x minus 1. So, to start with assume small p to be equal to 1 or higher. I hmm. will have to take the case of p equal to 0 also that I will do later. Hmm. That is at least first order prediction errors are given to at least first order say p equal to 1 okay. and you have to go for p plus 1 then p plus 2 p plus 3 like that hmm. recursively. Hmm. How to do that? Huh? So, start with forward prediction error. I have to find out E p plus 1 f n. What is the corresponding subspace then? W 1 forward prediction means it will always start at 1, but go up to p plus 1, is not it? x n minus 1 dot 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 up to x n minus p minus 1, okay. x n minus 1 it will go up to here like x n minus 1 dot 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 this term and one more term. Hmm? This space I will try to write as a orthogonal decomposition in, in terms of orthogonal decomposition. So, that projection on that can be written as a summation of two projections. Now, how will I do that? Please see I have given you this hint last time in the general case. This is my less, last entry. What I will do? Otherwise, this was already there. You have added one extra guy to this set. What I will do? Space span by this, I mean, this double, I mean, the span of total thing is what? Direct sum of space span by this much plus the span of this, because they are linearly independent. Is not it? You remember that way I told alpha 1 to alpha p, and then I bring a, uh, some other factor beta. Overall space span by is what? Span of alpha 1 to alpha p, direct sum that are beta, but they are not orthogonal. But at least to start with, it will be same as space span by x n minus 1 to x n minus p, direct sum space span by this last guy, but they are not orthogonal. Then what I will do? This last guy, I will try to project orthogonally on this, take the error. Then this will be equivalent to the space span by this set x n minus 1 to x n minus p orthogonal sum the span of that error. There are those two spaces are equivalent all those things we have seen last time. You remember last time we have seen you know, we took the projection and we say the projection I mean this is contained in that subspace and that subspace is contained in this subspace so both are equivalent that kind of proof I gave. You remember na? I took the general case alpha 1 to alpha p and then beta I brought in span of alpha 1 to alpha p direct sub beta that is same as I mean that is content in the space span by what span of alpha 1 to alpha p orthogonal sum projection of beta projection error correspond to what projection of beta on the previous space. You remember this I did and I told it repeatedly that this is what I will be using again and again. So, I have no question of re -ex explaining it. I will be simply orthogonally projecting this on the space span by this take the error. So, the entire space will be what? Is the orthogonal sum of the space span by this much x n minus 1 to x n minus p, then you can write that orthogonal sum and the span of the error. That is w 1 p plus 1, which is span of and this new guy. This is same as you can write one line, it is the same as is the span of this direct sum span of this element, but that I am skipping. That is equivalent to what? Span of this fellow that is x n minus p, x n minus p, which is nothing but w 1 comma p. Then orthogonal projection of this space that is p 1 p perpendicular. p 
span of this. And I told you when there is a single element, instead of writing span of that element, I will use this notation. You remember this also I said. When I mean this is not inner product. Inner product means after this there is a comma two elements a comma b x comma y. This is not inner product. I am using only these two less than and greater than symbol. This this for once you understand this is nothing but a new notation for indicating span of the single element. This notation I used in the last class to indicate instead of writing the span thing again and again, whenever you have single element, I shall just put to these two lines less than and greater than, and it will mean the same thing span of this guy. Now, question is what is this? Now, suppose n minus 1 you call n prime, n minus 1 you call n prime, then that means what? This is x n prime, n prime minus 1 up to n prime minus p plus 1 and n prime minus p. So, this is projecting x n prime minus p into its p future terms and the error. So, it is p th order backward prediction error, but at what index of time? At n prime index of time. What is n prime? n minus 1 by this definition. n prime minus 0, n prime minus 1, dot 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 n prime minus p plus 1, those are the elements on that n prime minus p that is projected and the error, is not it? Not understanding. I am calling n minus 1 as n prime, then you x n prime is what? n prime minus 0, then n prime minus 1, dot 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 n prime minus p plus 1 and n prime minus p, this I am projecting on this part. So, means n prime minus p is projected on space span by what? n prime minus 0, n prime minus 1, n prime minus p plus 1, this this one. What is projected? n prime minus p. So, what do you get here? E p b n prime and n prime is n minus 1. So, this random sequence if you delay by 1 that is what you get. This is a random variable at n equal to 0, n equal to 1, equal every, at every index is a random sequence variable. So, you can form a sequence of it. If you delay that, then you get the next one, right? n minus 1 that way. Okay. Are you getting me or not? That means this is so my purpose was to find out E P plus 1 F N, right? Then you gave me the prediction errors up to pth stage, pth order. Why not get the same thing for p plus 1? And what is e plus p plus 1 fn? It is p1 this space index n with respect to n 1 means n minus 1, n minus 2 up to n minus p minus 1. These are quantities I have to find out. That is the xn fellow has to be orthogonally projected on this total span. But this space is orthogonally decomposed as you can if you want you can put the orthogonal here, but I drop this. These two are mutually orthogonal, right? So X n projected on this is what? What is the total projection? X n projected on this plus on this, but this is not projection, this is error. So I have to take this compute this projection, subtract it from X n. So this is what? X n minus And what is this projection? Projection on this and projection on this. Projection on this means I will go only up to this. X n projected on the how many past? Only p past. X n minus 1 to x n minus p. So, that will give me p th order forward prediction error, not p plus 1 f. Is not it? This projection I can write as say for your sake, I will do like you know step by step for once only. This projection you can write as summation of two components projection on this projection on this projection on this is what plus projection on the orthogonal component this you know projection on orthogonal component is what on any vector any vector projected on any other vector you know the component what that is 
x projected on say y projected on x. So, remember I did this that norm square root transformation all those things y inert product with x divided by norm square of x this times that vector x. I did all that keeping a this in mind I did not do this just to teach you some mathematics. I told you repeatedly I will be using those things from now on. You follow this the y with x divided by norm square y inner product with x divided by norm square of x that is the coefficient that times x. That means x n what is the projection on this surface x n inner product with this guy divided by the norm square of this guy into this guy. Okay. into this guy. Now, x n minus this, this is the orthogonal, this is the forward projection error for p th order only. This is very easy to see, this, this total space I am decomposing as what? This much, span of this much plus another extra component coming due to the projection. So, x n projected on this remains the good old p th order projection error only. In this there is no change, nah. that is this part and that you subtract from x n, so you get that projection error. But essential thing is here, here you see the denominator, what is the denominator norm square of backward projection error, so, I told you backward projection norm does not depend on the index because of stationarity, did not I tell you this, this is independent of n, only this p, b they matter isn't it. So, this n square will have no meaning there. So, the denominator will have sigma p b square, this quantity will be as it is. Here x n with this and what is this quantity? This is after all what? This is a projection of this last fellow on the space spanned by this part. So, I again write it that way p 1 comma p orthogonal x n minus p minus 1, is not it? So, x n comma that and remember I told you I showed some fantastic thing last time that whenever you have to do this operator, you can interchange the operator x n comma this projection or projection error operator working on the another vector, you can pull it you can either repeat it on both or you can take it from here and push it here, you understand? What was the logic? Logic was x n can be written as a what? x n itself can be written as what? Summation of two components, projection on this space and the error, projection on that space and error, projection and this they are mutually orthogonal, so that goes only the error part, error part means again p 1 p orthogonal x n, so p 1 comma p orthogonal x n. So, this operator gets repeated twice, then I can drop this operator, why? Because this can be written as original vector x n minus p minus 1 minus the projection, but that projection is orthogonal with the error component coming from here. See, this is repetition, this I explain, if you do not follow, I cannot help. I took pains to explain all this in the previous, I am only reminding you. I told you that time that please remember this always all throughout the course that I will be making rap, I mean, repetitive use of this. Okay. So, I will be bringing it from here on top of it x n. And the moment I bring p 1 p orthogonal on x n, I get back this x n of projected on this part and error, that is our good old p a order forward projection error. So, inner product between p a order forward projection error of any index p a thought are backward projection error of n minus 1 at the index and inner product means correlation and this inner product I will define as again this inner product. Okay. So, that will turn out to be this, this quantity, this quantity will be what inner product
In fact, I am not taking, I am only repeating. This I am leaving as it is. This is P 1 P orthogonal x n minus P minus 1 as it is. This I can repeat on this. So, this remains error and this comes on top of it also. So, this becomes another error. So, this remains as it is, which is equivalent to E P F n. Okay. Now, this the, what is this? It is the inner product. Inner product means correlation between the two. What is the correlation? That is the expected value of this into conjugate of this. What is this? It is x n minus a linear combination of this first two elements. Combiner coefficients are independent of n. Projection, same here. And you are multiplying. So, again correlation terms will be free of n after you apply the E operator. So, this net quantity again will be independent of n because of stationarity. Are you following? E p f n is what? x n minus a linear combination of this fellow. So, you have got terms like x n, x n minus 1, x n minus p all that. Similar kind of thing will be here and you are multiplying the two. So, you will have only you know many correlation terms. All after E operation, you will get correlation terms. So, they are all independent of n, only the gap lag. So, this entire quantity is independent of n, time invariant. I can give it a name p h order, so it will depend only on p, but not on n. I can call it delta p. It is called partial correlation coefficient, parkour, we we'll call it parkour, partial correlation coefficient, parkour, P A R Q R. So, this is your delta P. So, you see this is one recursive relation. Given this fellow and this fellow, that is P A order forward prediction error and P A order for the past, not even current. I can find out P plus 1 is order forward prediction error for the past, for the uh, current index. But I need to update this also. Unless I update this, how can I from here go to p plus 2? Because that time I will require e p plus 1 b n minus 1, is it it? Are you following me? If I have to go from give him these two, I could obtain this. Then again, how to get e p plus 2? That means I have to be given e p plus 1 f n, e p plus 1 b n minus 1. That means I must update this in p also. Okay, I will apply the similar, absolutely similar philosophy, just little change of terms. I mean, here the space consists of some terms, there the space will consist of extra term and will not consist of particular term like that, but philosophy is same. So, now I will go for E p plus 1 b n. This relation you remember, huh? this is my relation, this one half of a lattice field, a lattice state. Hmm. Now, I go for E p plus 1 b n. Hmm. What is E p plus 1 b n in case you have forgotten? E p b n means go to the past term n minus p and then look at the p future terms including current. So, n minus 0, n minus 1 up to n minus p plus 1. This span space on that I project x n minus p. So, now I am going for this. So, that means I have to consider n minus p minus 1, is it? That is, I have to consider this projected on from current that is 0 delay to p th. n minus 0, n minus 1 up to n minus p. So, total p plus 1 terms. Those are the p plus 1 future terms if you are standing at this index. Is it? n minus p minus 1. So, immediate future is n minus p then n minus p plus 1, then n minus p plus 2, dot dot dot, then n minus 2, n minus 1, n minus 0. Hmm? This span space on that I project this, check the error, that is my p plus 1 order backward prediction error. What is the space here then? W 0 p, this is a projection, so here W 0 p, Here, one term I take out. I will take out one term as the new guy. Which term? This term or this term? 
hmm? between the two I will take out obviously first I will say it is a direct sum this place is direction of span of that single guy and the rest and then I will project that guy onto the rest and take the error. So, I will have an orthogonal decomposition. So, should I proceed here or here? Does it matter? It matters because my this element is to the right of this. If I take this out, I am at a loss. There is a gap, isn't it? A minus, a minus. I take this out, and if I project this on this part, I again get back my pth order forward friction error and all that. N projected on this part, n minus 1 to n minus t, isn't it? This is same as what? Span of x n direct sum span of this rest. If you want, you can write this way x n span of this remaining part that is w 1 to p, w 1 to p and this x n, but this is they are not orthogonal. So, I will be projecting or x n orthogonally on this and take the error. So, there is direct sum becomes orthogonal sum. If I project x n on this part, what is the error? After all, x n projected on what? x n minus 1 to x n minus 3, the space of that. The error that is forward pressure error, ps order. That is now this fellow is to be projected on this together. That means on this plus this because it's orthogonal decomposition. At least this fellow, when projected on this part, so that means. What I have to do E p plus 1 b n, I will repeat from here, it means this error original fellow minus the projection that is projecting this guy on the space span by this, this projection subtracted from the original one that is the error. Hmm. I am writing and uh, this projection, projection can be written as what this much? A projection on this part, projection on this part, summation. First projection on this part. Hmm. And here, x n comma. Mind you, x n comma this, not this comma this. When y is projected on x, it is inner product between y and x divided by mod x square, not x and y. Two things are not same when it is a complex, one is a conjugate of each other. So, do not be casual and say, oh, a comma b and b comma a are same, no. So, x n projected on this. So, x n with this guy inner product. Divided by norm square of this guy into this guy. Pretty simple, projected on this x n with this by norm square divided by norm square into this guy. Now, here again n minus 1 if you call n prime, then look at only this part. After all, p 1, comma p, what I am doing? I am taking one part here, another part projects. Huh? I am projecting on that an error, that error is this and net projection is what? One projection I have to find out the span on the span, span by this, but there if I take n minus 1 to be n prime, then x n prime, n prime minus 1 up to n prime minus p plus 1 and this guy is n prime minus p. So, n prime minus p is projected on the space span by is p future ones. So, actually it is p th order backward friction error for index n prime and the, this becomes error. Hmm. When you back home, please see this derivation. So, you will see this just in one case, one suspect gets an extra element from the right side, here it gets from the left side, it is just that, nothing much n prime, n prime is n minus 1, so I am substituting in minus this, again I will play the same trick here, e p plus e p, p f n is p 1 p perpendicular x n, p 1 p perpendicular x n, this I can repeat on this, 
uh, just a minute this is not excel this fellow is projected i made a mistake this is here you will have the guy who is projected is this guy na i am projecting this on the space on this together so this on this plus this on this this on this is inner product between this guy and this guy divided by the norm square of this guy into this this fellow isn't it is because the fellow who is projected is this fellow so i have to take the inner product between this fellow and this fellow take the norm divide it by the norm square of this into this so this n minus p minus 1 here and p 1 p perpendicular i will can repeat on this and what is p 1 p perpendicular so i have just now seen what is p 1 p p 1 p then this space only 1 p na p 1 p means x n minus 1 to x n minus p x n minus to x n minus p hmm. if you be n minus 1 this much on this you are projecting this taking the same thing p th order i mean if you can again call n minus 1 to be n prime so n prime minus p and n prime minus 0 n prime minus 1 to n prime minus p plus 1 that way is not it so p a p number of future terms starting at when you are starting at uh, standing at n prime you are looking at p future terms on that you are projecting so p a order backward prediction error but because you are projecting backward from using future you are projecting back okay p a order backward prediction error for index n prime which is equal to n minus 1 so that means this becomes inner product of divided by this norm square we know this is a variance of this and that is independent of n because of stationarity or that is using our notation into E p f n. So, this is the another relation. So, these are the two relation one was this here I called it delta p what was delta p? E p f n and E p b n minus 1 they are inner product here is a reverse. So, this delta p starts this quantity this quantity is delta p starts ok. We will show that sigma p f square and sigma p g square they are same we will we'll prove it using induction and station right we will prove the numerator these two quantities may be different one is sigma p the variance of backward prediction error and this variance of forward prediction error of the same order, but they are same that we will see and both are real because variance after all both are real. So, only difference is in the numerator, numerator is complex because inner product is not necessarily a real number, but, it is, eh? but one is the conjugate of each other the other. So, that means this overall multiplier in one recursion is the conjugate of the corresponding multiplier in another recursion. I can draw a circuit the stage now No, that I mean you are saying intuitively. There is no, I mean, I do not know how you can arrive at that. If I lift the notion of stationarity, they are not, but using your line of logic, they are always it is only true for the stationarity. But the way you are putting it, that is what they will be applicable whether it is stationary or non stationary. Ah, that is ok. Stationarity I have used where I am only making them independent of pain, that is all. So, to prove the stationarity, we need stationarity. Hmm. We need stationarity. Anyway, so first start with this guy forward prediction p plus 1 at order, it takes E p f n, hmm. it takes E p f n, E p f n 
minus a quantity, this whole quantity I will call it k p, k p is called the reflection coefficient, hmm. k p reflection coefficient, denominator is real, numerator is in general complex k p, k p times this backward, sorry this is n, so this is n minus 1. but independent of n because of stationarity and you get this is for p greater than equal to 1 mind you initially I told p minimum value take to be 1, but this will work on also for p equal to 0 that we will see and now this other one e p plus 1 b n again it uses the same two same two signals e p f n e p b n minus 1, but multiplies in a defined way this quantity I told the denominators are same, but I have not proved it yet. So, this whole multiplier I call it k p prime now. Hmm. Later I will show that one is the conjugate about that. No point. So, you in giving a new name. So, this entire quantity let us call k p prime. Hmm. So, this will be This one stage of lattice filter. Okay, this I put here, and you can cascade it. When you cascade, this is e plus e p plus one b n na. We start with the delayed version. That is why delay. I am putting the delay on the input. If you take this and go on cascading it, you will get various order. We'll show in the next class that both these variances are same, then k p, k p prime are same that one is the conjugate of the other obviously, if they are new, new denominators are same, numerators are already conjugate of each other delta p and delta p star. So, together they are conjugate of each other because denominator is not only same they are real and uh, then an important thing is this reflection coefficient the magnitude is always less than 1 that will prove. Okay. Using that we will show that if you can use the, if you want to use the air, this uh, lattice filter, we will develop the entire lattice filter for uh, doing something like you know auto, auto regressive modeling. You know something about this, na? I, did I discuss in this course, power spectrum estimation, air modeling and all that, ok. I will do fair bit of that also. So, their stability of the filter will be guaranteed because of this fact that the reflection coefficients are magnitude less than 1. We will get a score not only causal and stable filters and all those. Again, DSP and other things will come up. So, it is not just vector space, you know, they will be integrally related now from now on. So, that is all for today. So, see you then. Thank you.